Hello everyone. In this session, let me explain how a semiconductor could be used as a switch. In order to explain how a semiconductor is converted into a switch by in including or by injecting dopants or impurities, let us first discuss what happens to a pure semiconductor when it is connected across an voltage source. So when a pure semiconductor is connected across voltage source, no conductivity or a very small amount of current uh, happens to pass through this pure semiconductor because this pure semiconductor did not have any electron or code. Whereas when we include an impurity, a p-type impurity or an n-type impurity, a p-type impurity is a trivalent impurity Trivalent impurity is said to have three electrons at its outermost orbit and uh, the one vacant position where an electron could come and occupy is known as a hole. So a p-type impurity has holes and an n-type impurity is said to have electrons. And we know an electron uh, makes a bond with another electron and pairs with it. Silicon already has four electrons and these four electrons pair with four of the electrons that is av available with the impurity. And in case if we introduce a pentavalent impurity, we have one free electron available. And this free electron takes part in conduction. And thus, when we connect the P-type impurity to a potential or a voltage, then Electrons from the negative terminal occupies or uh, occupies the holes and thus uh, it jumps from one hole to another and uh, thereby take part in conduction. Whereas when an n-type impurity is connected across a voltage source, the electrons get drifted or uh, from the negative terminal, we have electrons being injected and these electrons are drifted away and attracted towards the positive terminal, thus we have conduction in the circuit. So we make a semiconductor to conduct by introducing dopants or impurities. Introducing impurity is known as doping. And now this flow of electron or uh, the flow of electricity depends on the amount of voltage that we apply across the semiconductor. If the voltage is increased, then we know the current also increases. So this is one way in which you could increase the value of current and uh, you could decrease the value of current by decreasing the value of uh, voltage that we apply across the semiconductor. But under specific conditions, if we want to make this semiconductor act as a switch, it's better we go for a junction field effect transistor. So a junction field effect transistor is formed by either a P-type semiconductor wafer or an N-type silicon wafer. So a P-type silicon wafer is considered taken and it is heavily doped by N-type impurities in the middle alone. And uh, we have two PN junctions formed because of this and uh, we call it as JFET, junction field effect. So let me explain why it is known as junction field effect. It is known as junction field effect because the junction that is formed controls the flow of current within the P-type uh, silicon wafer and hence you call it as the junction field effect transistor. And uh, the N-type impurity that we see on both sides are heavily doped, that is more number of uh, uh, N-type or pentavalent impurities are doped within these two regions compared to the P-channel. And these two regions are connected internally and is taken out as the gate terminal. So JFET has three terminals, one is the gate, drain, and the source. And in order to differentiate the N-channel JFET and P-channel JFET, we have a small difference in the symbol, which is distinguished by the direction of the arrow mark as it is shown here. 
And now let me explain the working of a JFET. So first, let us consider an n-type uh, silicon wafer alone. And we know when you have an n-type silicon wafer alone and if you are connected across a voltage source, conduction occurs. And uh, here you have a terminal when you consider it as a JFET, right? So you call it as the gate. And let me call this voltage as the uh, drain voltage. And because of drain to source voltage, you have a conduction or current happening here. And let me call the current as ID. And uh, now let, me, let us see what happens when we connect a voltage uh, source between the gate and the source. So I'm going to give a voltage, reverse biased voltage across the gate and the source. So the P type material is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and the positive terminal of the battery is connected to the end channel and you call it as reverse bias. Under this condition, under the reverse bias condition, we know the depletion width will increase. So what is the depletion region? Depletion region is the region where you don't have the charge carriers devoid of the charge carriers. So as the, this region is devoid of charge carriers, though you have uh, uh, free electrons here and here, conduction will not be completed or uh, conduction will not occur because this free electron cannot penetrate through this region which is devoid of charge carriers. And hence, this N-type silicon wafers conduction is controlled by just expanding this uh, depletion region. And uh, when you reach a point, okay, so when uh, we increase the voltage, get uh, the source voltage, and if we reach a point where ID is equal to zero, then that gate to source voltage is called the pinch of voltage. So pinch of voltage is the maximum voltage that has to be, or the minimum voltage that has to be applied across the gate to source so that conduction is made zero or ID is made zero. And even if you increase uh, the gate to source voltage beyond this value VP, again, it's obvious that uh, conduction will not occur because depletion width uh, or the depletion region has completely blocked and uh, thereby it, no conduction is going to occur. And as you increase the value of uh, VDS, so this is the drain to source voltage, so as you increase the value of uh, the drain to source voltage, here ID is also going to improve. And now let us understand the characteristics of uh, a JFET. And uh, we have two characteristics. One is the transfer characteristics and the other is the uh, drain characteristics. Transfer characteristics is obtained by increasing the value of uh, uh, gate to source voltage and thereby measuring the value of drain current. And uh, this is done by keeping VDS a constant. So VDS is made constant and we are going to now increase our VGS in steps. Understand? VGS is a negative uh, bias voltage which is applied across the uh, PN junction. And now as the negative bias voltage is increased, we know the uh, depletion region width is going to increase and thereby it's going to affect the flow of current ID. And hence, now let's understand how it works. So initially, when VGS is zero, ID is at its maximum. And you call the value, or let me label the value of current as ID, yes, yes. And as we increase the value of voltage, the current decreases and it slowly decreases 
and at a voltage which is equal to Vp. So this is the point where Vgs is equal to Vp. At this point, Id is equal to zero. The drain current is zero because your depletion region width has completely increased and it has blocked this channel completely. So you call this as the channel. Okay, and uh, this is the drain, sorry, transfer characteristics and the transfer characteristics drain current is defined by this expression, which is IDSS into 1 minus VGS divided by VGSS off. So when does our uh, uh, VGS uh, off the uh, transistor or off our device? It is when VGS is equal to VP. So in most of the books, we have it as VGS divided by VP, the whole square. So this expression defines uh, the curve, which is drawn in orange color. That is the transfer characteristics. The drain characteristics is obtained by varying the drain to source voltage and measuring the value of uh, drain current keeping VGS a constant. So initially, let us have uh, VGS to be zero. And when VGS is zero, at uh, zero drain voltage, we have a minimum uh, current flowing in our circuit. And then the value of current increases linearly till a point. And after the knee point, we have uh, the current to be almost a constant for uh, a small increase in voltage. And then, we have experienced the avalanche breakdown. And in case if uh, the voltage, uh, drain to source voltage, so here the gate to source voltage is zero. And in case if the gate to source voltage is increased, so if VGS is greater than zero, then uh, okay, this is going to be the characteristics. And if we uh, decrease the voltage beyond zero, or that is, we, if we make the gate to source voltage negative, then this will be the characteristics, drain characteristics. So the same could be explained with the transfer characteristics as well. So if we increase the value of uh, uh, drain to source voltage, then IDSS increases and also VP increase. And in case if we decrease VDS, then this is going to be the characteristics. So this shows the characteristics with increase in VDS. And this is the uh, transfer characteristics and uh, this is the drain characteristics and the region where uh, we have uh, uh, the voltage and current to increase uh, proportionately is called as the ohmic region. And the region where we don't find uh, much of change in current uh, due to the increase in voltage, we call it as the saturation region or the pinch of region. So this says that uh, the width is uh, decreased very much, okay? So the channel width is very, very minimum and uh, our uh, transistor is saturated. And uh, if we further introduce uh, more voltage, then the depletion region breaks because of uh, the avalanche phenomenon. And hence, uh, we call this region as the breakdown region. So this is how we uh, classify the regions of uh, the uh, transfer, sorry, drain characteristics. Now let's compare the behavior of uh, JFET and VJT. In JFET, if we have an N-type channel, we have conduction because of electrons. And uh, if the N-channel JFET is uh, taken away, and if we put a P-channel uh, JFET, then the conduction in P-channel JFET will be due to holes. And hence, we call JFET as a unipolar device. Whereas here conduction happens because of both the electron and 
he holds and hence it is known as a bipolar device. Here we introduce voltage across the gate and source terminal in order to control a device and hence uh, JFET is a voltage control device whereas we have the base current controlling our transistor and hence it is a current controlled device. When, when you talk about the input resistance, the input resistance of uh, JFET is very, very high when compared to the input resistance of a BJT. So the input resistance of a JFET is going to be in the order of uh, mega ohm, whereas the input resistance of uh, JFET will be few ohms to kilo ohm. And hence, we say that the input resistance is greater for a JFET. And when we talk about the temperature coefficient, JFET has a negative temperature coefficient, whereas uh, BJT has a positive temperature coefficient. So negative temperature coefficient uh, is one where the current value decreases with increase in temperature. So the current value is going to decrease with increase in temperature. Whereas here, because of the positive temperature coefficient, current value increases with increase in temperature. And hence, uh, a transistor BJT is uh, set to suffer from thermal breakdown. Whereas in case of JFET, thermal breakdown does not occur. So this is because of the temperature coefficient, negative temperature coefficient. And uh, JFET does not store any minority carriers and hence it could be used for high switching speeds. And uh, cutoff frequencies. Whereas JFET cannot be used for such uh, circuits that are supposed to uh, operate with high switching speed and uh, cutoff frequency because they store minority carriers. And uh, as you have only one uh, uh, charge carrier taking part in conduction, this JFET is less noisy. And uh, BJT, when compared to JFET, it is noisy. And you could experience that when you go near an amplifier box. And it's simple to fabricate JFET uh, as an IEC and it occupies less space while fabrication, but it is hard to uh, fabricate, uh, difficult to fabricate uh, BJT as an integrated circuit and it occupies more space when compared to a JFET. But comparing the cost, the cost of JFET is high, whereas BJT is cheaper. Thank you.